This furniture project didn't quite turn out the way I had expected, and I can say with certainty that I don't wish to work on another dresser like this one anytime soon. However, when I found this mid-century Bassett dresser in the thrift store for $15, I couldn't ignore the challenges that would come with removing the layers of paint. I shared the news recently with my patrons, but many of you have been asking where I've been in the last month and a half. I've been working on putting together my new booth in the Atomic Antiques store on the west side of Madison. I'll be sharing more news on that in the near future. I thought if I remove the paint and apply a new finish, this dresser could look a little better, and perhaps this style would grow on me. This color scheme chosen by the previous owner certainly isn't my style, but as you can see, this dresser served a very specific purpose recently. One of the biggest risks when refinishing a piece of furniture that has been painted is finding hidden veneer damage, often caused by the previous owner while scuff sanding prior to painting. I'll remove all the drawer poles with a flathead screwdriver. Unfortunately, these drawer poles are plated metal and will be difficult to polish. When removing most finishes from furniture, my first option is usually using the 2.5 inch carbide scraper. This is one of my favorite refinishing tools and is the most purchased item from my affiliate links in the video description. I'll be listing all the tools used in this video in the video description. Scraping the paint from this dresser using the carbide scraper proved to be difficult, so I'll move on to using a paint stripper. Oftentimes, the original finishes on vintage furniture, such as lacquer, can be removed easily by using the carbide scraper. It's no surprise that the cost of just about everything has gone up recently. For example, I used to get one quart of paint stripper just a few months ago for less than $10. Now the cost is almost $13. So I want to say thank you to all of you who have purchased items from my Amazon wish list for me to use in the shop. I also want to say thank you to those of you who have sent postcards, letters, and other gifts in the mail. I appreciate all of your support. When removing the paint and the paint stripper from the detailed areas, it simply isn't enough to use a nylon brush. You'll see in a moment that I'll add mineral spirits and this will make all the difference. Removing the paint from a big project like this can be overwhelming, but it's important to remember that it's not necessary to remove all the paint during this step. The paint that remains following this step can be removed by using the carbide scraper and the rest can be removed during the sanding process. It's still snowing here in Wisconsin, and in order to heat the shop, I use a kerosene heater. This allows me to get the temperature in the shop from about 25 degrees Fahrenheit to upwards of 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Controlling the temperature can often be difficult, but I'm grateful for the workspace that I do have.
Most of the American mid-century furniture pieces I have worked on have been made from walnut, and the Scandinavian pieces from teak, so I was surprised to see that this mid-century dresser was made using mostly white oak. My original plan was to refinish this dresser using a walnut colored stain, but once I discovered that this was mostly oak veneer, I began rethinking my options. One of my first thoughts was to apply a natural finish to this beautiful wood grain, but the question was, would I be able to remove all the paint from the wood fibers? The other concern, which is common with these painted furniture pieces, is how much damage I would find on the edges of the veneer. Because this is such a thin layer of veneer, I'll try and remove as much paint as possible from the wood fibers by using fine steel wool, a nylon brush, and mineral spirits. As mentioned earlier, it's not necessary to remove all of the paint prior to sanding. In this step, I'll apply water to the entire dresser. This should help raise the wood grain and make removing the paint from the wood fibers much easier while sanding. Once again, I'll use the carbide scraper to scrape some of the detailed areas of this dresser. I'll sand most of this dresser using the power sanders, but I'll start with a sanding block. This should help remove most of the remaining paint. I'll start sanding with the surf prep since this works well for sanding detailed areas. I'll also be using an orbital sander on some of the larger parts of this dresser. If you're considering purchasing a surf prep sander, you can find a link with a discount code in this video description. At this point, there are still some imperfections in the wood. I've only used 150 grit sandpaper. I'll finish this process by sanding with 220 grit sandpaper in preparation for the stain. Sanding some of the detailed areas may require sanding against the wood grain, so I'll finish by sanding in the direction of the wood grain. This was one of the most rewarding parts of the project, and at the same time, one of the most frustrating parts of the project. The veneer turned out beautiful, and I expected some damage. However, this next section came as a complete surprise to me. I've made the mistake of burning through veneer in the past, and that's how we all learn. However, this time, I'm not responsible. I knew at this moment that a natural finish over the oak veneer was not going to be a good option. 
For the small section of veneer that's missing, I remember that I had a pile of veneer samples that at one point was exposed to water. Although mostly damaged, I believe there's still some pieces that could be used. This would be a good time to explain why I chose this project in the first place when I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this dresser wasn't even my style. It's repairs like these that enable me to continue practicing my skills. This dresser was likely headed to the landfill and at the moment I have no emotional attachment to this piece. So if I make mistakes, this is the perfect piece for them. Perhaps there's a better way to repair veneer damage, but this is the best way that I know how. I've applied the new piece of veneer by using hide glue, and I'll use sawdust to fill in the remaining gaps. I'll attempt to conceal the large burn on one of the top drawers by applying hide glue and a little sawdust. A proper repair for a burn this large would probably involve replacing the entire veneer panel, but in this area, the resale value of a dresser like this would not warrant spending the money to replace the entire panel. And here's more veneer burn damage on the edge of the dresser prior to me using my orbital sander. This is likely caused by careless prep sanding prior to painting. It's always good to keep the sander flat when working on the edges of thin veneer. The back side of this dresser only required a few nails to re-secure the panel. Before all of the paint was removed from the dresser, I decided to apply an oak stain. This would allow me to remove the stain with a sander if I didn't like this choice, and it turns out I didn't. This didn't seem like the right finish for this dresser. So I finished sanding the entire dresser and then decided to use a water-based wood stain by General Finishes in the color Espresso. It felt like such a shame to cover up all the beautiful wood grain with such a dark stain color, but with all the damage that had been done to the veneer, I felt that this was the only choice. And after the first application, I still wasn't pleased with this stain color, and so I applied two more coats. For many reasons, you could consider this project a practice piece, and for that reason, I decided to use the original hardware and try and polish the plated metal by using a cream polish. Once the stain had completely dried, I sprayed on several coats of crystal clear lacquer in satin. I never imagined this project going in this direction, but it's safe to say that this finish is more like a glaze. To help blend the final finishes together and add an extra layer of protection, I'm applying a clear paste wax to the entire dresser. I'll wipe off all the excess with a t-shirt. 